I'm alive today, Daddy. Is by your grace. I woke up this morning. Is by your grace. Those people who have died today, I am no greater than them. Those people in the mortuary. I am no cooler than them. I'm alive today, Papa. Is by your grace. I woke up this morning. Is by your grace. Those people who have died today, I am no greater than them. Those people in the mortuary, I am no cooler than them. I'm alive today, Daddy. Is by your grace. I woke up this morning. Is by your grace. Those people who have died today. I am no greater than them. Those people in the mortuary, I am no cooler than them. I'm alive today, Daddy. Is by your grace. I woke up this morning. Is by your grace. Those people who have died today, I am no greater than them. Those people in the mortuary, I am no cooler than them. Hallelujah. Father, I want to thank you for the gift of life. I want to thank you for your word. The Bible says in Psalms 118 verses 17, that you shall not die, but you shall live and declare the goodness of the Lord. I want to thank you for the gift of life. And I want to thank you because of loving us. I want to thank you for the Sunday service. I want to thank you for the month of October. I want to thank you because many shall be celebrated. I want to hide my viewers and the online church in the blood of Jesus and I want to stretch my hand as an umbrella over their lives, over their finances, over their marriages, over their children, over their, 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 their career, and whatever you have put into their hands. And let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Do you have my number? Do you have my number? Do you have my number? My number is very important to you. And some of you are asking, why have you not greeted us? You are asking my number. Yes, do you have my number before I greet you? Because my number, when you have it, you keep it. It is a point of contact. And it shows that the number you have, it means that you own me and I own you and the devil cannot touch you. Amen. I cannot have a spiritual covering and I don't have their numbers. That is, that, yeah, it is true. That is why sometimes you dream somebody erasing your pastor's number. Why? Because number of that person that you listen to every day is very important. Amen. I am born again. Jesus Christ is my personal savior. And I'm very excited today to be together with you. Amen. I want to appreciate you for partnering with me. I want to appreciate you for supporting me. That is why. God is keeping me and continuing using me into other channels. God has been privileged, have privileged me, and have entered into another channel, Kingdom TV. It is a local television, but it is reaching many people. Every Saturday, 3 uh, to uh, 9.30 p.m., I'm there. 
and it takes your finances for me to get there. I'm in Oracle, I am in Mwendani tele, uh, radio station, and I am also on Kingdom TV. And I would ask you kindly to continue partnering with me. I need your 1,000. Yes, yeah, sometimes when I start teaching, I forget. That's why I'm telling you. I need 1,000. You are my family. I need your 500. I need you to send me your tithes if you have nowhere to take them so that I can continue to bringing them together and I'm able to do much for my people that are waiting for me somewhere. This is my telephone number, my mobile number 746 553 And my partnership account, it is one, uh, my account, account uh, my pay bill number for the account, it is 400 222. My account number it is one seven three nine nine eight three hash. Send me your transaction. Let us preach the gospel together and God is going to bless you. We are speaking about the tithing. Many of you have called me and they are like, wow, woman of God. I wish you taught me this many times and many years ago. I think I would be very far. It is not late. It is not late. The Bible says that one minute, uh, a thousand years or a thousand days before the Lord is just like a minute. There is always restoration. We have, I'm almost done. We have been speaking about a tithing and we said tithe, it is spent 10% of what you earn, 10% of what comes into your hands, 10% of your income. Many of you are asking, why are you teaching? You stopped teaching about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I heard it very clear. And the Lord said, and in fact, he even spoke to me last week and said, intercessors are worry and warriors don't tithe. Very few tithe. And that is why you see intercessors and warriors, they are really spiritual. They are fighting battles that is coming to pass. They are seeing visions, they are coming to pass, but they are still in one place in their finances because they don't tithe. Amen. We have seen it even in our churches. You see people who are not able, most of them, the intercessors, the warriors, many times being in church is not a problem, but they feel we are serving God in our prayers. We, and you see financially they are in trouble. You can, you can concur with me in that because I'm not saying all of them. Majority, I was told, we don't give tithes. And that is where I'm speaking about it. And I'm almost done. And then I continue with the gift of knowledge. Amen. We spoke about obedience and we said that obedience, it demonstrates, you know, we demonstrate obedience and, and we demonstrate obedience and God always will bless us because of our obedience. When you obey, God blesses you because of your obedience. And I've given you examples. Number two, we said we get to partner with God in the ministry. God is not interested with our finances. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 50, 51, we are to 50 and from verse 7 and verses 20, 12, from verses 7, verses 9 to 12, the Bible says that he has a thousand, you know, cattle on a thousand, on the thousand, a thousand mountains, you know. And he says, I don't need, if I am hungry, I would have just taken one and slaughtered, you know. But he's not hungry. He needs your money as a sign to use it for the kingdom of God. Now, I want us to deal with number three and number four. I feel time for me to speak about tithe is almost done. The cloud is leaving for speaking about the tithe and I want to get it very fast so that November I can start with the gift of knowledge if God allows. Amen. Now, number three, apart from obedience, which demonstrates, you know, uh, that our obedience is always a blessing. And apart from partnership, number three, we put money in its place. We put money where it belongs. You are 10%. When you give, you are putting it where it belongs. 10% is not an offering. 10% is not a seed. Tithe is not a seed. Is not partnership. Tithe is not the gift is not covenant seed. No, 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 no. It is not the gift. It is not the seed of faith. Mm -mm. It is not 
you give and then you expect a miracle when you say, I've given my tithe, I want this. No, it is you give. Whether God blesses you or not, you have fulfilled your righteousness. You have obeyed his word. Yes, you have obeyed. And every time you give, a, you give tithes, there is a blessing. Okay, every time, let's go to Malachi, there is a blessing. Every time you give a, 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 your tithe, sometimes you don't need even to mention it. You don't need to mention it. No, 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 no. Me, I give tithes. And when I give tithes, I'll give you the benefits next time. There are, there are seven. I think there are seven that God has revealed to me, you know, to me for my level. Now, look here, Malachi chapter 3 and verses 10. The Bible says, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. It's a command, bring. Please listen to my prayers this morning. Listen to the prayers on, 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 on Facebook. On Tuesday, it's on, on the YouTube. But on, on Sundays, normally, the service and the Sundays, Sunday, Sunday service is on YouTube and Facebook and intercession on Facebook. But on Tuesday, it is on, on YouTube. And on Monday, it is on Oracle Television. And on Saturday, it is on kingdom television at 9 30 now the bible says bring you all tithes into the storehouse bring you all not single all not less all you cannot say i'll give it small by small portion portion you know you can say i'll give a sacrifice portion but for me i tell people pray that god will give you so that you can give it at once because it's a sacrifice. You know, it's a sacrifice. Offering is the weekly offering to say, okay, this is to thank you, you know, for, you know, faith. There is the seed of faith. I want to travel to America. Yes, I don't have ticket. I am supposed to go there or I want to get married. Nobody loves me. Nobody is seeing me, but I'm sending a seed. I'm giving a seed of faith towards marriage. I have a sister today. She's a pastor in church. And uh, she came one time and she told me, I'll be dressing you. And as I dress you, I am asking God for marriage. Yes. And she would every Saturday, every, I'm telling you, believe it or not. And as I'm speaking, the husband is hearing. Now she used to send money. She used to bring me clothes every Saturday. I'm telling you, she would bring like four and tell me to choose. And I would choose one or two. And she's like, stay with the rest, you know? And people were wild in church. They felt that I'm buying clothes, but they didn't know somebody was planting a seed. She would bring me a shoe. She would bring me a handbag. She would bring me whatever. And I'm telling you, she only did it for one year. Then she got married. Today she's blessed. She's blessed and she have a child. Yes, it is faith. Seed of faith. I'm giving seed of faith. I also do the same. I give seed of faith. I tell God this one, I'm doing it because I want so and so to accept Jesus as their personal savior. It may not come immediately. But tithe, the Bible says, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. All the tithes. Tithe is never divided. That because I have 10,000. I will give Pastor So and So five. I'll give Pastor So and So this. I'll give Apostle. No, no, no. It's never divided. It is what you earn, it goes to where you are, you are getting your covering. And there may be meat that there may be meat, that there may be food. You are not sending your tithes. Your pastor is sleeping hungry. It is a curse. Yes, you are not taking tithes to your mentor. They sleep hungry. It is a curse and you can never succeed. You may succeed once. Grace will continue speaking. Grace will continue speaking. But there is time where grace puts a stop. The Bible says that there may be meat in my house. Imagine Apostle Damaris preaching to you if I am your authority. You are not sending tithes to me and then I stop being on oracle or I sleep hungry or I stop being in, you know, like now in church. 
people we are commanded by God that every Sunday they should give a seed. A seed is as little as you can afford. Why? Not that I can't buy food in my house, but God wants to remove them from their problems. It is a seed. And I saw myself when I'm receiving their seeds, I'm giving them a small fish. And I asked the Holy Spirit, what is this? And the Holy Spirit told me, every time they give you a seed, that week, you are blessing for them, materializes in their lives. Those that we are meant to sleep hungry will not sleep. And I'm telling you, it has done, it has happened. And every seed you plant, there is a day you harvest. Yes, there is a day you harvest. It's just like a field. Every Listen, something God has taught me. Every The kingdom of God, or let me say chariots of fire, we give an example with this ministry. Okay, the kingdom of God is in ministry, in chariots of fire. Now, if you are my follower, if you are under me, you see, okay, this is my pastor, this is, you know, okay. You have your place, you have your field. It is one field, but it is having segments where everybody is. You are given, you are entitled to your small inheritance, your small land. That is where you are working. So you are working, it is praying, it is supporting, it is speaking good, it is sent. Okay, I'm just trying to give some small example. Or if it is in church, church, there is a lot of activities that go on. So everybody is working on his field. So if you fail to do what you are supposed to do in your field, then it is not worked. Kuna, there are some land, you find it is dry and it has cracked. There is no, there is no rain falling on that land, yet they are in the same field. There is no rain because they are not following the instructions in church or they are not being a blessing. Your tithes and your seeds and your giving, your prayers, they water your land. Whatever you give as a seed, it can be maize. It is planted. So you will be working on it in prayer, having faith, and not killing the seed, not killing the plant with your word. Oh, I've been giving to God. I've been tithing to God. I've been doing this, but nothing has happened. No, no. I was telling people on Sunday, waiting is not easy. Waiting is not easy. And I was telling them from the day God called me in school, it is now 26 years that God is fulfilling what he called me to do. And I was telling them it is not easy. This is the time he is doing it. He told me that I will deal with the foundations. He was training me to deal with the foundations. Now he gave me the foundations that he told me to deal with, including the foundation of the nation of Kenya, is what I'm dealing with. And this is what he said. Any nation you enter, when I instruct you, any county or any nation you enter, like now when I deal with the foundation of Kenya, I don't need to deal with any other foundation in, in any county. No, it is already dealt. If God takes me to Uganda or to Tanzania or to wherever he will take me after my assignment in the nation of Kenya, I will deal with the, with the foundation of that land. And I will deal with the foundation of the government. It is not easy. It is not easy. That is what I was told many years to, many years ago. I waited for 26 years. Those 26 years is like a baby. When you give birth to a baby girl, this girl grows, enters into teenage. You are still looking at the girl. The girl is becoming beautiful. The girl goes to the secondary school, university, graduates. Hey, and the girl comes and said, Mom, this is the man I want to marry, my friend, at 26. Either she is already married or she has a first daughter or two children. Waiting is not easy, my friend. So when you see me teaching you these things, I've been tried. I've gone down, I've gone up, I have failed, I've been lifted, I've become dried, I've been watered. I have, my friend, is not easy. Waiting is not easy. So anytime you give your tithes, anytime you give your seed, don't be quick to receive. Sometimes it comes immediately and, and sometimes it opens blessings that have been closed. 
Sometimes it can be your life. The Bible is telling us, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Anytime the church is closed because you have not taken your tithe and you feel like you are doing your pastor a great favor, let me tell you, I'm going to be hard today on you and please pardon me. I tell my members, when you are giving tithes to me, you are not doing me a favor. You are fulfilling the obedience from God and you are doing yourself a favor. Yes, you are doing yourself a favor, not me. Yes, that is the word. When you are giving, you are not giving to me, you are giving to God. You are doing yourself a favor. The moment you start seeing when I give to Apostle Damaris my seed, when I give her my offering, my tithe, I'm not doing her any favor, but I'm doing favor to myself, then you will be giving it easily. You will not be looking at how the money is being spent. Yes, the Bible says that there may be meat in my house. Now do you see why number nine we are told, you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me, even the whole this nation. I represent God. So if you rob, if you don't send your tithes and have given you a covering, I'm just teaching, eh? or you are not giving your pastor where you go to fellowship, I don't know, whoever covers you, you are not giving them their tithes. You are cursed with a curse. Why? Because there are many things that are being done that are being stopped because you are of your disobedient. When your pastor sleeps hungry, when you are, the pastor's children are kicked out of school, when your pastor is walking and, and you are blessed to make his life easier, when the rent is not, you know, is not adding to anything and the house is locked, you are cast with a curse. It is not him or it is not her, it is God that has cast you with a curse. The Bible says in verses 10, the part three, part three, and prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts. There is one thing I know that has been said about proving God. From Genesis chapter one to Revelation 22, only Malachi chapter three, verse 10, speaks about proving God in tithing. On Sunday, I had a different experience. I was delivering a girl. And uh, when I finished delivering, before I finished, I realized that there is a sacrifice that was given. And I asked, what sacrifice have you given? He said, seven goats. Now, this girl has never spoken kikamba, but the girl was fluent in it. Even us, we were shocked. She has never so we knew there is a spirit speaking through her. And um, seven goods. And I asked people, how much is that? Then I asked, how much was that? He said 20,000. And it was a long time he took. She took there. The devil, the enemy, the auntie, the wicked auntie did. Now, I told the mother, go get a sacrifice. The mother struggled to get it. But she brought it before the service ended there was heavy manifestation even before the sacrifice came because I told him, go look for it and bring. Let me tell you something. After the whole thing, something happened, and I said, I don't think to, I don't need to take this sacrifice. But the angel of the altar spoke to me and he said, this disobedient from this girl, if you don't take this sacrifice or the work that you have done, it will be stronger against this family. I, didn't, I don't like taking something if it will not work because of your disobedience. Yes, I told her take the sacrifice to the mother. Why? Because it ended up with some disobedience. And the angel rebuked me and I took it back and I put it on the altar. And I told my assistant pastor, remove 6,000 because tithes for the church, we give 20%. We don't give 10%. 6,000, we put it in the account for tithes. The remaining, you know, I told him, go deposit it in the account. I will not touch even a penny. Let the sacrifice speak. Do you know before she arrived home, she confessed everything? The sacrifice. It, that's how it works. Sacrifice works. Amen. What was I trying to say? 
I do not use people's money if I know it will not work for them. Because mine is to see the work done. The Bible says that, prove me. Anywhere God is saying, prove me. Be very careful. Why should I eat your money if it is not going to work for you? Why should I eat your money if it is not going to work? The Bible says, prove me now. Here with, that says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing every time you give tithes, no matter how small it is, as I'm about to finish, no matter how literal it is, as long as it is tight, if I've given you 20 shillings, two shillings is not your money. As long as you have obeyed, the Bible says that, prove me, no matter. Number two, I will open the windows of heaven. Number three, it is not only about windows, it's not about, there is a blessing. You don't need to be told what that blessing is. Maybe, you are traveling and there is a dog. I remember one time I was going through a hard time and I was expecting my daughter. And I think I was almost due to deliver. So I decided to take a walk and I was all alone. I didn't normally when I'm walking, we go with my husband. I felt, let me just walk by myself. And I was going to the shop. I needed to buy some milk. I said, let me go for it. And then I come and I was walking alone. I was 20s. Eh? I was walking alone. Listen. There is somebody that had come into my house. And when this person came, I didn't have anything to give to them. I decided to enter into my room. I got something. I said, I have nothing to give to you. You have drunk water because we are going through a hard time. Uh, you have taken water. The Bible says whoever comes to your house, please take a cup of water if you have nothing to offer. And this man came to visit us and left something. Now it's a, it's a couple. I gave them. They didn't want, but I said, go with it. Listen, because of that act, when I was going to the market to buy some things, I met a group of sheep. There was no way out, my friend. There was no way out. This is a fence. This is a fence. These are sheep coming. This is a pregnant woman almost due to deliver. Nobody at the back. And these goats, these sheep, they were fighting people. So I saw this sheep coming with the head to knock at me. But let me tell you something. When it came near me, the other sheep hit it. I, I was left standing, closing my eyes. And then I realized the goats, the owner has already helped me out. That is what happens. There is a blessing. Maybe I was expecting a blessing to pay the rent. Maybe I was expecting a blessing to, 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 for the hospital bills. But the blessing was to protect the baby in the womb. That is how things happen. The Bible says, and I will pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Blessings. Every time you are faithful, blessing. The Bible says that the money we get, we don't put it anywhere. The tithe you give, it is a way of obedience to show that you are putting the money where it is supposed to be. Now, I have written here as I finish, we all have a, a choice on where to put our money. We can we can't pursue, we can pursue greed and we can also give it to God at the same time. Now, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let me read you this. I don't know, but what I've said is what I needed to say. You are not doing, you are not doing God or you are pastor a great favor. You know, there are people when you give and then coincidentally, I don't know, your pastor, somebody blesses them with a car and you are like, oh, this is the tithe I gave. Or you have been visiting pastor and the seats are bad in the office or in the house or, you know, and you have given good offering. And then you are like, ah, those are those seats they have bought with my tithe. But you don't know whether somebody was being auctioned and decided to sell them at a throwaway price. You don't know whether somebody was moving or somebody was instructed to take. You don't know whether somebody else sent money somewhere. My friend, never look at that. Amen. Hebrews. Hebrews. Yes. 
This thing I'm teaching is not easy. There are people who have been insulting for nothing. Now, chapter 13 and verses, uh, Hebrews 13, verse 5. Let your conversation, let your conversation, manner of life, let your conversation be without con co uh, covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible says, whatever you are doing, if it is about tithing, if it is about talking, if it is about supporting men of God, women of God, do it well. Because the Bible has said, I will never leave you. Amen. That is the blessings you receive when you put money where it is supposed to be put. If it is tithe, put it where it's supposed to be. I'm speaking even to a pastor. You don't use God's money. There are people who have slept hungry. Yes, there are people who have slept hungry. For you to eat, spend it well. Spend it well. Now, the final scripture is in Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. Matthew chapter 6 and then we pray. Matthew chapter 6 verses 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold that uh, to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and money. If you cannot let go your tithe, pray for yourself. You are there, you are saying, woman of God, I want to receive Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I am asking you to pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And I come to you just as I am, asking you for forgiveness, asking you for cleansing. I write my name in the book of life and re remove my name from the book of death. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please partner with me. There is a reason why God has allowed us to learn about tithing. There are many secrets about tithing. There are many secrets about giving. But sometimes we don't speak them out because some of us will not understand it and others will feel like we are asking for money. I am asking you for money. 1,000 or 500. I am asking you for your tithes if you are under me. You have submitted to me as your pastor. Why? Because there is a lot to be paid. There is a lot. To partner with me is partnering with God. I need your thousand. I need your offering. I need your 500 so that I can meet the bills of the ministry online in Jesus' name. This is my pay bill number. This is 400-222. My account number. It is 173-9983 hash. Send your transaction and let us preach this gospel together. This is my number 0746-553-997. God is going to bless you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I have spoken your word. I am still continuing to ask you that the word I speak to the online church shall not be like Greek in their spirits, but it shall be understood and they will enjoy the fruit of obedience. You spoke, leave what you are teaching, talk to them about tithes and offerings, and that is what I'm doing. And God, I am asking you, let them prove you in this. I have proved you, I have seen you, and I have lots of testimonies that when you are faithful with your tithes, there is a blessing. Father, I am asking you that you are going to expand their territories. Those that have received Jesus Christ as their personal savior, I am asking you that you are going to stretch your hands over their lives, that you are going to give them a pastor that will nurture them, that will take care of them and their spiritual needs in the name of Jesus. Those that are in this around Embu County, I'm asking you that you are going to gather them, bring them to my hands that I may teach them, nurture them, and help them to grow, and your name will be glorified. Bless their offerings. Bless their partnership. Bless them. Expand them. Heal them. Heal their marriages. Heal their finances. In Jesus' name. I want to bless you by the blessings of God, that this week you are going to excel. 
This week you are going to be celebrated. And this week you are going to put your enemies to shame by the grace of God. In Jesus' name. Always remember that where there is a prophet, there is a testimony. And by the hand of Apostle Damaris, signs and wonders and miracles are your portion today. God bless you. Keep preaching with Apostle Damaris. Amen. Mm -hmm.